Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday. Thursday morning here in California, about 10.08 a.m. August 29th, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 1.1 earthquake into the area of Nevada. That's where we're starting off here today with a lot of earthquake activity in the last 24 hours um, across this area. Quite a bit this morning so far as well. Quite a few ones and twos in there. Uh, taking a look at the last seven days of earthquake activity shows over 100 earthquakes here in this area. 136 to be exact in a couple different uh, main regions here across these uh, mountain ranges. Gold looks like the Goldfield Hills, Stonewall Flat area, Stonewall Mountain. Uh, this area has shown a little bit of earthquake activity uh, across various fault systems here in this in this region and uh, fairly um, well I was looking at a lot of these earthquakes earlier and a lot of these magnitudes have not been um, looked at in terms by a seismologist so they're underneath automatic status review a lot of these from yesterday still underneath automatic status review so uh, as far as the direct placement here in terms of location and the depth for these earthquakes uh, they have not yet been updated to uh, accurate measurements but it is making uh, at least the uh, computer systems out here picking up the preliminary data they put the computer puts together uh, a location on where it's at magnitude and the depth and uh, there's some interesting activity out here uh, across various locations uh, of various magnitudes and various depths there below the surface so uh, definitely got some interesting activity out here uh, again there's numerous fault systems just south here of Tonopah uh, I did pull up historical data out here and there's not a whole lot uh, specifically in this area uh, where we're seeing the earthquake activity today it's roughly within the circular type fashion right here I make one think maybe uh, some type of volcanic activity can't rule that out but uh, as far as any you know intense earthquake activity out there historically I pulled up 5.0 and above and there's really nothing out here since records have been kept uh, further down south here south of the area of interest we've seen a 5.1 back in 1999 and also a 5.7 back in 1999 uh, and those two earthquakes struck on the same day interesting huh goodness just off the 95 there of course, nuclear explosions, it looks like, uh, further down south here across this area, which is uh, a ways away from our area of interest right now. And that's uh, roughly around this region here, just south of Tonopah by about 10, 15 miles or so. Uh, satellite view out there, as far as anything of uh, abnormal activity, well, you really couldn't tell because there's a lot of desert out there in Nevada, obviously, and where the swarming is occurring. Uh, just some mountain ranges here, maybe some old volcanic lava domes, ancient uh, activity. Um, but uh, yeah, hard to say exactly what these little swarms are leading to, uh, whether it's going to be a bigger quake in the region or just a sign of the general stress pattern out here against the West Coast right now. Of course, the plate boundary is the main driving factor and what produces all these uh, earthquakes out here, even though it's a ways away, you get that stress building up here across the uh, the plates inland and these intraplate fault systems here. Uh, do see some large earthquakes on occasion, but uh, either way, goodness, I mean, just in the last 24 hours, 68 earthquakes. And again, well over a hundred if we were to pull back the last couple days here in this area. So we'll continue to watch that region of Nevada uh, Southern California getting a couple earthquakes out in various locations here, mainly in the areas of interest that I've been talking about here in a triangle fashion. Ridgecrest over across the shear zone here, this mountain range, uh, the Tehachapi area, Grapevine area, shear zone, the Garlock Fault shear zone is a major player, I believe, uh, in uh, accumulating quite a bit of slip rate, and that could be the key uh, to... Um, figuring out when that big one will happen out here on the San Andreas Fault. Uh, but anyway, through Ridgecrest over here to Bakersfield where we've seen that 5.2 a couple weeks back now, and then down here across the uh, southern portion of the state. Uh, we did see a little bit of swarming out here in the Ocotello Wells area yesterday and a little bit more overnight, some twos and ones in there as well. Uh, the San Andreas Fault itself for now is uh, quiet. 
right? But that's the main plate boundary. That's where the strain stress accumulates, and that's where the 8.1 earthquake, uh, who knows? It could be larger. I mean, it's uh, it, maybe not. It's hard to say. The southern branch here, uh, geologists claim that this is capable of producing an 8.1, and that was put out many, many years ago. Um but the size of the magnitude of, of the earthquake is dependent on the length of the fault system or the plate boundary and also what type of fault system this is. This isn't a subduction zone. This is a uh, the strike-slip transform boundary. Uh, northwestward movement here of the Pacific plate, southeastward movement here in general uh, in this proximity of the North American plate. So no subduction zone here. A couple trough zones out on the... Uh, Pacific Ocean, but yeah, 8.1 is what uh, is capable here on this plate boundary, and uh, you know it's it's building. It is building, and it has been building for quite some time. This thing could go with uh, you know a strong wind out there. Maybe get a strong wind, <laughs> probably not. Okay, but just you know speaking a little bit here in terms of what could trigger it. Uh, it could be a couple little swarms around the area, or it could just pop all at once. So we got to be prepared for that. Further up north, aside from the uh, Nevada earthquake, look at that line of activity right here. You guys see that? It's in actually interesting here. Roughly about uh, Northern California through the Sierra Nevada mountains down into our area of interest, uh, which is underneath this area right now. A little odd seeing that earthquake activity, but that in general, you know, that. Ah, goodness. Now we got another earthquake there in the grapevine area, 2.5 coming in as I'm speaking. You know, haven't, haven't you ever heard of uh, you know quantum in quantum physics? There, uh, it's very interesting. There's, there was a movie I watched here a couple years back. How uh, one can uh, make things happen, right? When you're consistently talking about stuff or consistently thinking of something, it tends to pop up more. Like, say for example, if I'm driving in traffic and I, I can't stand tailgaters, right, or people that are driving. Uh, on their cell phone, right? I'm always thinking about that whenever I go out driving, and sure enough, it seems to come up more every time, every time I'm out driving because I'm consistently thinking about it. So uh, when one thinks about earthquake activity all the time, and we put in a lot of uh, thoughts out here uh, with all the recent activity in other people's minds, we could be uh, we could be creating our own reality out here in terms of earthquake potential. That's the uh, uh, that's a little scary thought, right? But it's it's uh it's got a little bit of science backing behind it, you know. Whether you believe that or not, uh, your thoughts can create uh, they can create your environment around you. All right, we're not going to go into that. That's a whole whole different video, right? Quantum physics and uh, other interesting down the rabbit hole type of events. We'll cover, we'll cover on the late night sometime. Maybe on Halloween night we'll cover that. Uh, Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. Um, that's just crazy, though. Look at that A line of activity. All right, I got to get off that because it's drawing me in. Even more activity right now in the, in the uh, Nevada area. Uh, further out and about here, Texas oil fields still getting hit with uh, some activity. Oklahoma as well. Uh, New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. I'm really not too too concerned about this. 1811, 1812 was when the last big one struck out here. Some upper sevens. Um, so 19. We're looking at yeah, eight, over 200 years. Um, the slip rate on here, though, I think is fairly slow uh, in, uh, in terms of accumulation of strain compared to the San Andreas Fall, right? We're looking at over 300 years since we've seen a full rupture out here on the southern branch. So, uh, you know, and, and there's a lot more slip rate accumulation on this fault plate boundary uh, than, for example, over here across the New Madrid seismic zone. Uh, but, there, you know, still 200-something years has passed. Uh, but for now, it's quiet. Uh, the rest of the area, there's our movement from last night, or yesterday afternoon, I should say, 6.1. A couple other fours in there as well. Um... We have seen a little bit of migration up northward here. Now, it's not going to show it on the USGS model, but if you look, there's been a bunch of threes kicking up here in the area of the Baja California region. So I said to watch for that because that could intensify going up the plate boundary 
uh, following that larger movement yesterday, this 6.1 there, off the coast of El Salvador region, right? Pretty big earthquake. Uh, nothing showing up here on the USGS map, but we are noticing an uptick here in Southern California uh, within the last hour or so. Uh, and also overnight with some three stirring up here into the Baja California area, just south of the border. So if I were to pull up the EMSC model here, we would probably see that. Bring that up real quick. Uh, yeah, so that's a little swarm going on here, just south of the border. Uh, some three stirring up. And all this activity uh, following the, the event uh, from yesterday. Let me go back over here. It's a little glitchy here, this map is. But uh, yeah, look at that. A little bit of three stirring up here. And of course, what sits up here, the plate boundary itself. Got to watch that. The San Andreas Fault, Southern California has been quite active here recently. And, um, you know, it, it's definitely ramping up here a little bit today. Goodness, look at that line, though. That's crazy. All right, I'll get off of that. Hawaii activity. Uh, scattered broad scale activity even some movement offshore here of Hawaii look at this swarm of activity uh, overnight and a little bit uh, from yesterday as well stretching out towards the Loihi Seamount you guys see that although this activity is uh, fairly deep about 20 miles or so below the surface so that could be indicative there of the plumbing system well below into the deeper areas that could uh, recharge and fuel up the ongoing uh, magma uh, movement up here across the Kilauea volcano. Nothing breaking through yet, but uh, minimal earthquake activity at best around the surface level. So we still got a lot of pressurization here across the upper east rift zone. Maybe recharging going on here, which could fuel these, uh, this volcano here in the coming days. As far as worldwide activity goes, let's back out here and see what we have. New Zealand getting in on some threes from last night. Um, as far as newer activity goes, we don't have a whole lot over here across the Western Pacific. And that's normally a sign here that things are getting ready to really kick up here across the Eastern Pacific. And uh, that includes the West Coast out here. So we'll keep an eye on it. There's a bunch of threes, Baja California, working its way up north into Southern California. Uh, further out and about here, some deeper activity here across northern India, just outside the Himalayas with that 5.4. And uh, older activity yesterday around Crete with that 5.1. A couple other smaller quakes out there as well on the globe. But uh, And there's some of the activity I said to keep an eye on as well across the re region of the Caribbean plate. Notice that we've seen movement north and south here on the northern segment of the Caribbean and on the southern end here. A 3.4 and a 4.5. Uh, following this event activity uh, from yesterday. So a lot of pressurization going on in the general area. Do have to watch the West Coast as well. Uh, but the Caribbean plate looks like it is being uh, squeezed a little bit here. And that makes sense because the general strain accumulation that happens here across this little Caribbean plate and the kind of a pink salmon or orange salmon type of color right there, right? When we get the subduction zone showing some earthquake activity, things get squeezed and a lot of strain builds up here on this area. So we've seen that so far this morning, north and south. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of adjustment up here along the plate boundary, Baja, California, Southern California. So there's, you know, it's it's a large area that's uh, shown some elevated movement right now. A couple different sections of plates here. you got the Cocos Plate subducting underneath here of the um, Middle America Trench, right? That's a section of the North American plate and the Caribbean plate right here. Very sensitive area, squeezed around this area, squeezed and pushed and subducted. And uh, I think eventually this will probably uh, disappear in the future. Well, I don't think we got a subduction zone here, so this part's going underneath it. Either way, um, it's a very small plate and uh, there's quite a bit of activity stirring up around it now. Let me see if, uh, where's that 2.5? What do we got now? Oh, they upgraded that to a 2.8 there around the grapevine at 1019. So I'm kind of curious about something here. Hold on a second. I'm going to bring up a different station there because for some reason that, uh, 
That's wow. That's a lot of stations I added. I was looking for a couple salt and sea stations out here, but uh, I want to look and see where the Cal State Bakersfield uh, activity is. This one here doesn't look like it's picking up the activity, so I'm going to do away uh, with this station and add one of these other Cal State Bakersfield stations up because these here actually look like they're picking up some of the earthquake activity more well defined uh, because that 2.8 should have shown up here on the seismograph stations at 1019 which was uh, oh wow so there's actually been a couple earthquakes here in the last few minutes so there was a 2.5 2.0 and a 2.8 at the grapevine area so see what I'm saying? You speak things into existence. We've been talking about it, and sure enough, man, goodness. So I'm going to drop this down. These are the earthquakes that are coming in right now. The latest one at 2.8. That is why it's larger here than all these other previous little spikes. That would make sense, right? So we got a little bit of a, a swarm kicking up right now. Which one am I going to keep up here? Something that looks somewhat well-defined. All of these could be usable, but... Yeah, the other one that I just got rid of was a little on the rinky-dink side in terms of picking up the data. So this right here should show more of the earthquake activity. Um, that 2.5 earthquake is at 10.12. So here's 17.12 UTC time. You go down here, this is going to be the uh, 2.5 and somewhere in here there's another 2.0 I'm guessing it's that little bitty spike you guys probably can't see it but over here we got another larger spike that uh, pretty much is higher than these other two spikes here indicating a larger quake a 2.8 on that seismograph station a little bit of activity showing up on Southern California as well there in San Diego see that little spike of an earthquake uh, so things are um they're on the uptick right now, ever since I've been talking about it. We've seen uh, three earthquakes here in the last few minutes, 2.5, 2.0, and a 2.8 right here in that area of California. So we need to be on guard here today. Uh, real quick glance at space weather, and then we'll end this uh, video. Just wanted to cover the activity. Uh, not a whole lot in terms of flaring activity right now got uh this is actually a decent looking cme somewhere huge uptick explosion most likely on the far side of the sun but uh no, notice those lines here when they're thick like that and and uh you know not all choppy that's a huge cme that was produced somewhere again most likely on the far side of the uh sun Nothing major on the earth-facing side for now. We do have a, a few sunspots that are coming around the eastern limb that may be of noteworthy value in the coming days. Uh, here's an area somewhat complex. These other areas right here are just about ready to drift off the western limb and really of no concern. But there's a couple other massive regions out here uh, that will be turning into uh, a little bit better view here in the coming days. So we'll watch for that. No major roars in the forecast here, folks, for now. Storm Prediction Center. Uh, got an enhanced area out here. It looks like they added for uh, some tornado activity into Minnesota. Uh, goodness. And Wisconsin as well in there. Um, a little bit deeper threat there into the uh, 5%. So keep your eyes on the sky. Be weather aware. Got some wind and also a little bit of hail out there as well for today's severe weather threat on this Thursday. All right, folks, I'm going to back out of here before anything else happens out here. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the area, obviously. Another 1.6 coming in literally just a minute or so ago. So we got one, two, three, four earthquakes popping up in a short amount of time period right there in the uh, Bakersfield area. Be on guard today, folks. We'll be out here on the side. I do have a few things I have to do away from the computer, but if something happens while I'm out on the mobile uh, device, I'll just uh, get on there and do an update on my cell phone and, and post it to the channel. But, uh, yeah, a little bit of interesting activity popping up here for sure. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening, folks. Unless something major happens, have a good day and stay safe out there.